Before I get into this first video, I'd like to say thank you to all of the authors, instructors, video channel hosts, event commentators, and forum members who have contributed their knowledge to the QSport community over the years. As a fan of the game's physics and geometry, I'd especially like to thank Dr. Dave Alciator and Bob Jewett for their many meticulous scientific explorations. Links to Bob's articles and da Dr. Dave's website and his YouTube channel are provided in the description below this video. So I encourage you to visit those wonderful resources. So here's the setup for the experiment. I placed two adhesive hole reinforcement labels spaced just a hair more than a, a ball diameter apart from one another. One of the labels would receive the object ball and the other would receive a proxy ghost ball. Now, for those unfamiliar with the ghost ball, uh, the ghost ball is, is the position that the cue ball should occupy at impact in order to send the object ball along a chosen path. Now, I wanted to be sure that cueing and sighting errors were minimized, so rather than attempting to shoot the cue ball directly into the ghost ball position, I would instead shoot the cue ball into a proxy ghost ball placed repeatedly and perfectly in the ghost ball's position. That small gap that I left between the proxy ghost ball and the object ball was done purposely just in case the mass of the cue ball added to the mass of the proxy ghost ball might skew the results when all the balls connected at once. I figured that this tiny gap might prevent the additional mass from affecting the object ball's release angle. It's true that this gap does increasingly alter the actual shot angle as we approach the steepest shot angles, but I thought it was a reasonable trade-off. At several distances, the object ball's theoretical zero degree release line, as well as five other lines one degree, two degrees, three degrees, four degrees, and five degrees away from the zero degree line are marked with colored adhesive dots. All of these lines converge at the center of the object ball label. Using a prototype of my throw tractor tool, I marked 19 shot angles from zero to 90 degrees in five degree increments. Here's a tip, never use the colored reinforcement labels unless you want to turn your cue ball into a measle ball. In order to construct reference lines in the video editor, I took still photos of balls centered on dots at each throw line. We'll use these lines to measure and plot the throw of every shot that I hit. For ease of measurement, I chose to create the reference lines using the outside right edge of the ball from the camera's perspective rather than the ball's center. It's just easier to see. For example, if an object ball's right edge contacts but doesn't go beyond the three degree line, the throw measurement for that shot is three degrees. But say the right edge of the ball lies halfway between the one and two degree lines, that shot's throw measurement would be one and a half degrees. I freeze the image after most shots and take measurements before any table roll off might occur. You'll see that I plot all shot measurements on a graph to the right of the screen, so you can easily follow the changes that occur from shot to shot and as the shot angle increases. Since the camera has a single lens, it can't see straight down every path at once, so I had to choose a position that I thought was the best compromise. I chose to center the lens close to the four degree line. Now I filmed this, this experiment a couple of months ago, and my memory isn't great, so I assume I chose this because I expected the maximum throw angles to be close to the four degree line. But it really doesn't matter where I centered the camera because the reference lines uh, for the measurement that we'll be using to plot the graph were taken from the still shots, uh, the still shots of the balls centered along each line. There are three groups of shots in this video. The first group is struck at a very firm speed. The second is struck at a medium speed. And the third is struck at a very soft speed. For each of the three groups, I struck at least three shots for each of the five degree angle increments. I tried to strike the center of the proxy ghost ball and avoid spin on the cue ball, but I wasn't perfect. Hopefully any cueing errors didn't affect the results much. You'll notice that once I get to the 85 degree angle, the proxy ghost ball completely misses the object ball. Now this is obviously the effect of that tiny gap that I left between the proxy and object balls. So the measurements I plot only go up to about 80 degrees. Worth noting is that the measurements for the steepest shot angles that I strike actually apply to shot angles steeper than the shot angle on the graph, since the gap between the balls essentially steepens the shot angle I'm supposed to be shooting. This was the trade-off that I mentioned earlier for choosing to use a gap between the balls. So that's the setup. I'll remain quiet during the experiment, but I'll be back to do a quick analysis afterwards. Here we go.
So having a look at the plotted values of all shot and speeds together, there are a few things I notice that might be worth pointing out. One is that the softest shots seem to produce the maximum throw, at least for shots with angles above about 20 degrees. For shots above 30 degrees or so, we see that the maximum throw that we can expect is just under 5 degrees. Two soft shots, one at 35 degrees and one at 40 degrees, resulted in throw of a bit more than 5 degrees. Are these two shots the result of my poor shooting? I don't know, but I find it interesting that they both occurred at shot angles only 5 degrees away from one another. For medium speed shots, it appears that the shot angle with the most potential throw is around 30 degrees, which just so happens to be the theoretical angle of a half ball aim, which is when you aim the center of the cue ball directly at the edge of the object ball. Something that really surprised me was the result of the firm strikes. The shot angle of 20 degrees appears to be the angle with the most throw. Going into this experiment, I was expecting that one particular shot angle would hold the maximum throw for all shot speeds, and I assumed it would either be the half ball aim or the three eighth ball aim. This doesn't seem to be the case. So the shot angle with the maximum throw seems to change depending upon shot speed. So for firm speed, 20 degrees, which is very close to the 5 eighths ball theoretical angle of 22 degrees seems to have the maximum throw. But for medium speed shots, the half ball's theoretical angle of 30 degrees seems to have the most throw. And soft speed, somewhere between 35 and 40 degrees, which happens to be close to the 3 eighths ball theoretical angle of 39 degrees. The last thing I'd like to point out or suggest is that the graph shows us an additional reason to practice controlling our cue balls. The more often we can land on shots below about 25 degrees, the less we need to concern ourselves about the effect of shot speed on throw, because the shallower shot angles have smaller throw ranges. Of course, we'd prefer the shallower angles most of the time for other reasons anyway, but a smaller throw range might provide an additional advantage. Please leave a comment below. Uh, let me know what you learned from this video. Uh, did I overlook anything? Did you see something that I missed? Goodbye for now.